All right, so today we're reading a wonderful interactive story called The Spider Woman Teaches the Navajo. How did the spider woman teach the girl that things in nature can be used to make new things? One day long ago, a, girl, a young girl walked to a spider rock. Many people live by. The girl heard a soft voice calling. She looked all around, but she did not see anyone. Then the soft voice called again. It seemed to be coming from inside the earth. When the girl looked down, she saw the ground had split open. There was a tiny crack in the earth. She was curious. So she peeked into the crack, and below the crack, the girl saw a small room. There were rugs hanging on the walls. The rugs were woven in wonderful bright colors and beautiful designs. So you will see what is the word design. So designs could look into shapes or different like combination of colors or lines. In this page right here, what beautiful rugs, exclaimed the girl. As she looked down into the room, Spider Woman looked at the girl. Come in, my child, she said. Suddenly, the girl found herself in the Spider Woman's room. Can I learn to weave rugs like these? Asked the girl. Will you teach me how to create them? I will teach you how to create rugs if you agree on just one thing, said the Spider Woman. You must go into the world and teach Navajo women how to weave. I will, agreed the girl. So the spider woman began her first lesson right away. The girl listened closely. First, the girl learned that the materials for the rugs were natural resources. These colors come from the earth, explained the spider woman. White comes from shells, blue comes from turquoise, and many colors come made from plants. Spider Woman taught the girl how to make each beautiful color. Next, the girl learned about the loom, which is the weaving machine. My husband, Spider-Man, made the loom for me, said Spider-Woman. The bar across the top stands for the sky, and the bottom bar stands for the earth. The loom is made of the sun's rays, the lighting, and the rain. Spider-Woman taught the girl how to use the loom. Finally, the girl learned about the designs. The designs come from the sky and the earth explained the spider woman. When I weave, I think about the clouds and I remember the flash of lightning when it rains. I dream of the sunbeam on the sunny days and I remember of the beauty of the mountain standing against the sky. Spider woman continued with a warning. You must never draw your design on paper, she says. Close your eyes and imagine that the design is in your mind and let the weaving come from your heart. The spider woman taught the girl how to make designs and the girl promised to listen to her heart. The girl was almost ready to begin weaving, but first spider woman shared the last piece of knowledge. The edge of the rug must have one small break in, it, in its design. She said, it is simple as a light of color woven into the dark background. This is an opening called the energy pathway, and it is the energy of a weaver escapes from the rug. If you do not leave an opening, the energy will be trapped inside the rug, and you will not be able to create more beautiful rugs. So the girl began to weave. She wove rugs and blankets of lovely colors and designs. After a lot of hard work, she became a good weaver. She left the spider woman and she kept her promise to teach the Navajo women to weave. The girl became known as the weaving woman. For the rest of her life, she traveled and taught the Navajo woman, women to weave. And that's why to this day, 
The Navajo still weave their beautiful rugs and blankets for all people to enjoy. Okay, let me go ahead and share now a different screen where we're going to be doing our writing activity about comparing how these stories are like and how are they different. Oh, wait, let me, oh, I forgot. I have to reread the bread story again so it can be easier to create the comparison. Give me a second, I, I forgot. <laughs> okay, back to the bread story. So this one, um, instead of, you know, pulling out the book of the what we read about bread, I'm going to show you the pictures little by little, and then you're going to listen to the pictures of the bread, and we're going to be able to create a good comparison of the two. Okay. <clears throat> bread comes to life. We eat bread every day. There is and there are many kinds of bread. Bread can be white, black, tall, thin, or with holes. The baker makes his own bread. He starts by planting seeds in his garden, and the seeds will grow into wheat. The wheat grows into tall and turns golden. It is time to cut the wheat. The baker cuts and gathers the wheat from his garden. The baker grinds the wheat into flour. He mixes the flour with yeast, honey, water, salt, and oil. He makes everything together in a bowl. The baker puts the dough in a bowl, lets it rise, punches it down, and lets it rise again. Then he puts it down into the oven to bake. The dough bakes into bread. The baker takes it out of the oven. He cuts it into slices. All right, so that was the end of that. You see how shorter that one was? It's just to give you the main idea. Okay, now I'm going to show you the writing activity that I will be collecting. So let me go ahead and go here. Okay. Okay. All right, so today's Wednesday, May 6, 2020. We're comparing the two stories. Um, the first story that I was reading, that is actually a folk tale from the Navajo culture, this group of people. Um, and it talks about how they have this legend about, um, you know, having these special rugs or special, like, um, fabrics that were woven by a woman who she met the spider woman. So you're going to see how the sentences come to life here and how we can say that one story is alike. Uh, you know, what do they have in common? And But uh, how are they also different, you know? So let me actually put this up so you can actually see everything. Sometimes my computer has a mind of its own and it does whatever it wants. So there's that. Let me make sure that. This camera also points a little down so we can see everything. Okay. We can see that in both. Both stories. Um, you know, they use. You can use the word that they use in another story. Natural. Resources. To make to make things right.
Okay, so in the different, we will really see what's going to show up for everything there. So one story is a folk tale about weaving. You know, how do they come up? Is there really, you know, a spike around? Well, we don't really know for a fact um, because, you know, it's kind of like a tale that they've talked to, to different people for a long time. But nonetheless, they still, you know, show the steps of weaving. The other story, you know, really is kind of like the recipe of how to make bread. You really see the steps one, two, you know, take out the seeds, okay? And then after the wheat is ready, then you grind it into flour and it just keeps following the steps. Um, I think the biggest comparison between the two is that nature in the alike section over here. Nature, you know, we see how it's important. So, for example, for the colors of the fabric to make uh, the strings, to make the rugs, you know, it comes from different things like plants or from shells, right? Or in the story of the bread, they used, um, you know, the flour that comes from the wheat that you have to grow as a plant. So those are the things that we're looking that are alike. And the, they're different. So they, they, they have some things that are alike, but they do have a little bit more that makes them different. All right. So let me go ahead and put this in. Yeah. 